Welcome to worship on this Labor Day weekend. My name is Pastor Joel Vanderall. We're so glad that you found us uh, here at Incarnation Lutheran Church. We're a church without walls and a chance to worship online uh, during this time. So thanks for joining us. Just a couple of announcements as we begin worship today. The first is to let you know about the Solid Ground Coat Drive that continues on uh, this week and next week on Thursdays. You can drop them off anytime between 9 and noon here at the church and we'll be happy to accept those donations. And then also on Sunday, September 13th, we'll also be accepting donations uh, at our Great Incarnation Fall Get Together. Uh, our second announcement is the Great Incarnation Fall Get Together that's going to be happening next Sunday from 9 a.m. to noon. This is a chance for everybody to gather together. We're going to have a number of food trucks that will be out here uh, at the church, a chance to celebrate the beginning of our new program year, uh, an opportunity also for our kids to receive a special blessing and a little present that they can attach to their backpacks and be reminded that they have been created in God's image, uh, which is just a way to share with them how much God loves them and a chance for us as a community to gather around them as they begin this new school year. So we hope that you all come and join us Sunday, September 13th from 9 a.m. to noon. We'll just be right outside the front door, an outdoor event. So please come and join us on that day. Our third announcement is that on September 20th, we'll be beginning in-person worship here. There's going to be a number of safety guidelines that we have for you. So, for example, everyone will have to wear a mask. Everyone will have to register ahead of time. We'll be holding two worship services, one at 8.45 a.m. here in the sanctuary, and the other will be a contemporary worship service at 10.30 a.m., and we hope that you'll be able to join us for that. You can scroll down to the bottom of the email to hear more about that information and receive more information about that uh, special service that we're gonna start September 20th. And finally, our last announcement is for our Growing Through Loss uh, opportunity that's gonna be coming up on Thursdays uh, this fall. You can register online and you'll find information about that in the email as well, or you can visit our church website to learn more about it. Growing Through Loss is an opportunity for people to gather together who have experienced loss any time within uh, the last year or so. Uh, it's a chance to grieve with one another, a chance to uh, support one another and to connect with others uh, who may be experiencing a similar experience of grief. And so we hope you'll join us. Friends, those are all my announcements. Uh, let's begin worship together with our opening hymn. Let's sing together.
again. Today we are wrapping up our sermon series on Paul's letter to the Philippians. This letter is joyful. It is full of words of encouragement, which is interesting because Paul was actually writing this letter from prison. Paul was writing to a beloved community of believers to reassure him that even though he was in the midst of difficult circumstances, his joy was undiminished and that he was confident in what was to come. But Paul wasn't the only one facing challenging circumstances. The church at Philippi was facing their own difficulties. So from the outside, they were experiencing persecution from the authorities who were non-Christian, who disagreed with what they were about. And then there were also a whole host of voices of differing voices that had different um, thoughts and beliefs about who Jesus is and what that means for how we live a life of faith. And all those different voices, it was confusing for the people at Philippi. They also, as it appears, had some internal struggle, probably some conflict among leadership. So it was against all of these, uh, this whole backdrop, that Paul was writing to the Philippians. Paul wanted to encourage them, through his example, to stand fast in the faith and to be intentional about how they lived it out. Now let's turn to Philippians chapter 4 and hear Paul's words as he begins to wrap up this letter to the community at Philippi, a community that he cares about deeply. Starting at verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Did you notice the promise in this passage? Paul is encouraging us to do very practical, very tactical things to invest our energy in certain practices because, like it says in verse 7, when we do, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Because, as it says in verse 9, the God of peace will be with us. Because when we do certain things, when we embrace certain practices, no matter our circumstances, we are changing our posture and our attentiveness to the God of peace who is always with us. I don't know about you, but I really need that. In these days especially, I have to be really intentional about that, and I know I'm not alone. I've been reading lately about people's experience of pandemic fatigue, of crisis fatigue. Everyone has experienced so many layers of loss, so much disruption and change. More and more people are feeling depressed or anxious or exhausted. As one person writing about COVID and pandemic fatigue put it, the metaphor of a marathon doesn't capture the wearisome, confounding, terrifying, and yet somehow dull and drab nature of this ordeal for many Americans. Marathons have a defined conclusion, but 2020 feels like an endless slog, uphill in mud. People are experiencing unrelenting stress associated with things like civil unrest and economic distress, with escalating divisions over masks and politics and the election, and uncertainty about what tomorrow will bring. A sense of 
how much more can we take was all over social media last weekend. After a week with another um, police shooting of an unarmed black man and protests and protesters being shot and killed and then there were hurricanes and wildfires, so many people expressed that the death of Chadwick Bozeman from cancer at age 43 was just, it felt like just too much. If you're not familiar with him, Chadwick Bozeman is the actor who, uh, whose roles include Jackie Robinson and James Brown, Thurgood Marshall. He also brought King T'Challa and Black Panther to life. He was unapologetically black, a man of dignity and purpose who had a mission to increase representation in film so that black children and adults could see themselves in the powerful roles that he played and created. It's just one more example of how for so many, the year 2020 feels like just too much. I remember several years ago when my mom's cancer came back and she was going through chemotherapy for another round for a second time. And I asked her, I said, mom, how is your spirit in the midst of this? And she sighed deeply. I mean, you could just hear the weariness in the, and then she said, well, sometimes there's just nothing to do but to do it. There's some truth in that. In this season, in a lot of ways, there's just nothing to do but to do it, to keep moving forward, to keep persevering. I mean, it's not helpful to stick our heads in the sand hoping that it'll all go away, even though that's a real temptation. And we've probably all done it, at least for a short time, more than once in this season. In a world where so much can feel out of our control, what we can do is we can be intentional about the practices that we embrace for our own lives as we move through this season. Practices that open us up, that help us to be attentive to the God of peace who is with us always, who is with us no matter the circumstances we're enduring in life. So this brings us back to chapter four of Paul's letter to the Philippians, where Paul shares some wisdom that I think can guide us in keeping at it in these tumultuous days. So there's a lot there, but I wanna focus on three practices, okay? So the first one is gratitude in prayer or gratitude in prayer. For this, we're gonna look at verses four through seven. So Paul encourages us to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And then do not worry about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication, which means asking. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. This can look like a lot of things. I mean, what if at the beginning or the end of the day or maybe at the dinner table, what if you simply name one thing for which you are grateful in this day? Or what if you keep a running list of people or circumstances that you want to entrust to God, even though the entrusting might be its own challenge? Or if even that feels like too much, what if you sit in a chair, light a candle, hold a cup of coffee or tea to feel that warmth, set a timer for 10 minutes with the intention of simply being. The God of peace will be with you. What's the first practice? Gratitude in prayer. Second, pay attention to what is getting your mental and emotional energy. What is energy draining in your life and what is life giving? As Paul says in verse 8, Beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. 
When you consider your life, if the negative inputs outweigh the positive, make an adjustment. Okay? Maybe you take a social media break for a day or one day a week. Maybe you limit the access that toxic people have in your life. Or I mean, check your own perspective to see if you are unknowingly contributing to the cycle of negativity. Again, this is not about avoiding hard but fruitful work. It's about checking the, ne checking the negative spin that saps the energy that's needed to do that hard but fruitful work. Instead, invest in more of what gives you energy and joy. Invest in more of what helps you experience a fresh perspective or laughter or hope. What's the second practice? Pay attention to what's getting your mental and emotional energy. Finally, the third practice is keep at it. Paul is describing what he has learned over time in the journey of faith, in times of plenty and want, in times of joys and sorrow, but being persistent in connecting with God and with other believers. One of the things that we have learned over the years is what a gift participating in a small group has been for so many people in the incarnation community. Now this has taken on a new look in the age of COVID. So we asked some small group leaders and participants these questions. How do you pay attention to your faith life in pandemic? And how do you engage in faith conversations with others while being physically distant? Let's hear from Christy Jacobson, Sonia Wilson, and Larry Reese. beginning of the pandemic, I'm such an introvert. I thought, yes, I was made for this. Being home every day, working from the house and being with the kids. And a couple months in, I realized how isolated I had really been and how I had really pulled back away from a lot of people and was invited to be a part of the small group, uh, rereading Pastor Kai's book. And it has just been such a blessing to me. When we started a small group during the pandemic, I wasn't sure what to expect, but I knew that it could be a big challenge to form connections and have meaningful discussions with a, a brand new group of women all over Zoom. It could definitely be awkward, hard to navigate technology wise, and the question is if anyone would even want to join us definitely crossed my mind. It seemed that the virus had taken away so many events and activities that I had been looking forward to though, that I wanted to give it a chance to try and create something good during these crazy times. Now, several weeks in, I'm super happy that we went out on limb. It's a group of people that I traveled to Haiti with a couple of different times and um, our meetings on Zoom on Sunday afternoons have just been a complete treat for me. And, um, you know, I'm thankful to see my Haiti pals again and to have that community. Um, and I've jo enjoyed all the conversations and the thoughtful reflections that we have for each other. Um, I've loved rereading the book again, and every time I have, it just is um, a slightly different perspective, this time with some new questions to be thinking about, but each time just as meaningful. The women in our group have been so enthusiastic and willing to share that it's given me a lot of energy and new perspectives. With a shared experience that we are all going through, it's been easy to form connections, and more than anything, it's been a lot of fun. Incarnation Small Group Ministry provides the threads of weft and warp in the fabric of our congregational life. Our small groups are keeping us woven together in the threads of faith and love, 
during this COVID-19 pandemic. They provide the encouragement and support we need from each other in our journey together through this challenging time. As we each find our personal thread of ministry in life, there are opportunities to share it in a small group. Your small group is essential in keeping the fabric of Incarnation's mission vibrant and alive in our calling to be a church without walls to those in need of our love. So while the pandemic has made small groups look a little different, it's good to know that the connections, friendship, perspectives, and fun are just as strong as ever. Our small group has been really life-giving for me. If you are wondering about possibilities for how you might keep at engaging in your faith life in this time of pandemic, there are some in-person and some online opportunities that are coming up this fall. I encourage you to watch for details um, by going to the Incarnation website or in the worship email that is sent each week with the announcements down below the prayer requests. But a couple of things to pay attention for or to watch for are there will be new small groups starting both in person and online in October. So signups for that will be coming soon. Over the next few weeks, there will be a couple of um, other opportunities for you to connect in, in person safely with masks and social distancing. Centering Prayer will meet in person outside starting Tuesday, September 15th. And Growing Through Loss is a really wonderful uh, series to guide people when they are experiencing grief. Uh, there's a six week session in person here at Incarnation starting September 10th, that's a Thursday. Again, more information for that will be available in emails and on the Incarnation website. There are many more opportunities for you to engage as part of this community so that we don't feel alone as we keep at it in this season. There's so much about 2020 that is wearying to our spirits. But again, we are not alone. Here again, the words of Paul. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. Amen.
Let's pray together. Holy and loving God, we are so thankful for the beginning of a new season. The crisp, cool mornings remind us of the changes that we will soon see in leaves as they turn from green to yellow, red, and brown. It reminds us of the spiritual transformation that's possible through the help of your Spirit at work within us. As a nation, we are in desperate need of transformation against the forms of systemic racism. These are not merely things we pray for and wish would happen someday in the distant future, but rather the transformation that needs to take place today and asks that those of us in privileged positions to enact change in our own lives, in our neighborhoods, our schools, our places of work, our local, state, and federal government. And so we ask that you would come, Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, when you walk the earth, you heal people from sickness. You gave sight to the blind. You made the deaf hear and healed those who weren't able to walk, even raising the dead to new life. We lift up to you all those on our prayer concerns list who are recovering from surgery, we pray for those who are suffering from illness and ask that your spirit of comfort and peace to be with those families and friends of loved ones who have lost someone recently. We pray for the mental and physical health and wellness of our frontline workers who daily put their own safety and well-being at risk for the sake of others. Grant them your peace, which surpasses all understanding when anxiety and fear creep in. Give them strength and stamina continue to continue to do the work you have called them to do. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you call us to rejoice in you and all that we say and do. As many of our kids and young adults return to school this past week and this upcoming week, we ask for your special blessing on them. Continue to open their minds to discover more about the world you have created. Grant their teachers and paras creativity and energy as they seek to shape and mold these young people. We pray for the support staff at each of the schools whose roles of cleaning and answering question after question of curious parents and children may feel overwhelming at times. Grant them what they stand most in need of each and every day. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. We now turn to a time of communion. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. As often as you eat of it, do so remembering me. After supper, Jesus took the cup, and he blessed it, saying, This cup is a new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins for all people. As often as you drink of it, do so remembering me. The bread which we break and the cup which we bless are the communion of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, who teaches us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
Now receive this blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let's conclude our worship by singing together a song with a contemporary worship band. Today's a new day, but there is no sunshine. Nothing but clouds, and it's dark in my heart, and it feels like a cold night. Today's a new day, but where are my blue skies? Where is the love and the joy that you promised me? Tell me it's alright. I almost gave up on a power that I can't explain. Friends, it's been good to worship together today. Go with this sending from the book of Philippians. Paul writes, And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for worshiping with us. We look forward to seeing you again soon.